It isn't just their policy on sleeping in that separates the two teams. Led by Dustin, the rocket team are calculating everything to the last detail before they start. More of an impact than maybe any other. As far as we can do, it just we just Whereas the gliders are focused on breakfast. You're all pretty relaxed, you've got a plan. Concept is done, we're down to just a few construction details now. Um, details. Can you give me any hints? What is it? What am I going to see? Is it going to be like Concorde it's here? A, it's no, going to be a plane with a wing and an engine at the front turning propeller yeah. and a tail which makes it go up and down. That's genius, that is. It's yeah. good, isn't it? It's and it also goes left and right. That's, yeah. that's some thinking has gone. I'm yeah. glad you... Oh, and there's an egg in it. And an egg in it. We're definitely going for a rocket. Really? Mine's yeah. made up. Definitely going for a rocket. I'm right. looking at the... Uh, there's a bunch of different sample rockets on the software. So I'm just looking through to kind of figure out which is the best way to put it just put together and... We can run the simulations on different ideas we have, so we know how long it needs to be, how big the fins need to be. I can imagine, you know, you're going to get lift. It's going to have thrust, so it's going to leave here. Mm -hmm. Where's it going to go then? That's what this is for. So we choose components, design them, and then we can put in any angle that we launch this from yeah. where it's going to go. That'll define the trajectory. Mm -hmm. That'll define the trajectory. This is seriously an absolute first for us. Yeah. Yeah. Every last bit of it's an absolute first. So you're first. learning new stuff. If it is a failure, if it is a failure, it'll be a spectacular failure. <laughs> so. To illustrate one of the problems the rocket team faced, my experts have set up a demonstration. We're going to demonstrate how a rocket works. Okay. And this is Newton's third law, the conservation of momentum. And for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Yeah, I'm familiar with that. Yeah. So that means, something like this, the more material you can throw out, or the faster you can throw it out, the more thrust you get. OK, so that's what our rocketeers are going to be doing, basically. That I don't is. see how this is going to demonstrate that. These fire extinguishers are small rockets, and we're going to crack open their valves and release the contents from them. And when that happens? Movement. Lots of material going on one way, I was going the other way. In just the same way that the rocket hopefully exactly would. Exactly the same way, yes. All right. Um, is anybody going to be hurt doing this? Um, we... Maybe, maybe not. We hope not. I'm not going to be because I'm going away while you do it. I'll stand mm. over here. Using everyday household objects, more or less, the guys intend to illustrate an element of rocket science. Five, four, three, two, one. There's one big difference between the team's rocket and what Cal and Ian have built. Control. Our boffins are on board their rocket and can continuously adjust the amount of thrust. But even that is difficult. The team is attempting to build a point-and-shoot rocket. They have to get the design right because once it leaves the launch pad, all they can do is watch. While Dustin is still engrossed with the simulator software, Jeff and Glynn are at a loose end. So what else needs to happen for the rocket part of the design? How does this part get fixed inside here? Oh yes, simply? absolutely. You have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Jeff fiddles with the electronics and Glynn makes a nose cone out of paper. How's that? Cool. Stuff it. Well, it looks like a rocket, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Even if it is cardboard and paper. Right. Some of the structure isn't looking terribly strong at the moment. So, for example, they've got a very, very flimsy-looking nose cone. Now, at top speed, that thing's going to be going probably well over 200 miles an hour. There's going to be quite a considerable force in the nose cone. If it buckles off to one side, gets asymmetrical, forces the nose around, it's like having a rudder in the front of the thing, and bang. After 12 hours on the computer, Dustin has a plan. Her team. So, show me your rocket. This is We've our... We've got some cardboard tubes. <laughs> it's not that's really a rocket. Products. This is our rocket right here. So, Well, now around. that's a drawing of a rocket. Yeah, that's uh, after some study, we're going to do two ignition stages. Because if we just have one where the nose cone comes off with the egg in it, when we fly it over to deploy a parachute, it's still going to be going too fast and it's going to shred the parachute. Hang on, two ignition stages, that means lift off, yep. one drops off, mm -hmm. well, and then another one. Well, no. it doesn't, there doesn't, it's not like an actual um, fire most times. We just have to trigger 
um, these two tubes are going to be connected together by a coupler. We have to trigger just a little black powder explosion to separate the two. Right. So what happens is it's going to be a really aerodynamic machine once it goes up in the air, and that that trajectory is going too fast. We need to disrupt that trajectory so we get it to kind of get turbulent and flop around a little bit. But what have you built? I haven't built anything yet. Um, Some cardboard tubes. They're opting for a two-stage design. Firstly, they launch the rocket, which will hit 200 miles an hour. Then, to slow it down, an explosive charge will break it in half before another charge releases the parachute and the egg floats softly onto target. Well, that's the theory. The problem is, a two-stage rocket is very, very complicated, especially if you've never built one before. The bulkhead discs on the flat side of this. You know what I mean? This, this is kind of raggedy. Oh, you doesn't need straightening up, yeah. yeah. Yep. Meanwhile, the glider team have searched through the kit we've provided and found an array of engines and remote control gear. But there's one crucial thing they haven't got. Wings. They need to build these themselves, and the design has to be right, or the plane at best will be uncontrollable, and at worst, just won't fly. We have an Air Force, guys. So we're going to use this template and put it over the fiberglass and then cut round it with a hot wire cutter. Well, yeah, I, I'm, we're going to just stick that onto the end of the phone blanks. Ready? Yep. James wants to make each wing in two sections, and it's absolutely vital that each section is perfectly cut yeah. to exactly follow the template. Yeah. Should I come up? Uh, yeah, come up. That's it. <laughs> I can see why it's a one-person job. You can see if it's resisting yeah, the middle. Yeah, I was going too fast in the beginning. Yeah, okay. We've, oh, we've, 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 we've copped one up. But, uh, all right, let's grab another blank and try again. Oh, we'll see. Yeah, you need That's to stay on the template, yeah? That gets hard. Layla is having real trouble controlling the tension of the cutting wire, which means the team wastes a lot of time and polystyrene. I think it'd be easier, since I'm holding this tight the whole time, if something were just holding it tight the whole time instead. Has anyone ever seen a bow saw? I know. Okay. Tell us about it. Uh, something across the middle. You've got two arms. You've got usually a saw blade, but or a hot wire, and something to pull this tight. Mm -hmm. Put a tension. I can make this in about three minutes. Flat. All right, go ahead. Yeah? James is just like a force of nature. He will. I think he'll work forever. He's. He can build anything. One there, Jim. There's two holes, two pins through to just catch the end. Layla has got some really, really good engineering and solid kind of methodological background. Do we have more cable ties? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I talk a lot. Ta -da! Told you, three minutes. Well, I don't want to be pedantic, but it was a bit more, but yeah. Right, but we'll give it another go. You guys ready? Yep. The bow saw idea gives her much more control. There, that's it. Contact. You can only really look on one side at a yeah, time. Yeah, I could even sort of... And just switching the nose now. <laughs> oh, and the winner is. Right, OK, we we'll finish off. They've cracked it, but the real skill with wings is deciding where to put them, as my boffins are about to demonstrate. So, come on, what have you got here? Well, one of the teams is planning to produce an aircraft of some type. So we're going to demonstrate their biggest problem, and that's control. Checking turbulence on the wing. Those little orange ribbons are your little friends. And they spell it out. When the wing's moving through the air like this, the first two rows of ribbons show a nice, smooth, flat flaw over the leading edge. There's some turbulence over the trailing edge, but that's okay, this will produce lift. If the angle's too flat, it won't keep them up. And if the angle's too steep, they'll get a stall. At that point, we're not flying, we're crashing. Don't be good problems. No matter what their wings like, they've got to be able to control the angle of attack during flight. Getting the wings right is only part of the team's problem. They want their glider to use a video guidance system, which will allow them to parachute their egg directly onto the target. Well, you can't fault their ambition. We're halfway through the build day. And where's the building? There's nothing made. I mean, this team, for their glider, are messing about with wing profiles and just throwing away everything they're doing over here. Well, the rocket guys are just calculating and talking a lot. Right now,